welcome if you're new. So today, today we're gonna be talking about, why are you zooming? Today we're gonna be talking about moving to Japan. First of all, moving to Japan, how exciting. Congratulations that you're even thinking about doing such a thing. Like seriously, I cannot stress enough how important it is to travel the world. I 100% recommend living somewhere else in the world at some point in your life. I think everyone should do this. It's just a life-changing experience that you just cannot buy at Sephora. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys an outline on how you can move to Japan. Like seriously, I wish someone did this for me when I was trying to move because like, oh my God, it was so irritating watching a billion different videos trying to like piece together little things that I think maybe I should be doing. I wish somebody just gave me the full breakdown. Like, here you go. There you go. Keep in mind, this is just an outline. You still need to do your own research. Jesus, take the wheel. I'm not Jesus. I'm Sunday and I can't, I can't do all this for you. Also, keep in mind, I can only tell you about the teacher route. I don't know the other routes. I will mention a lot of the other routes that you may be able to take in terms of visas, but I went the teaching route even though my job is different from teaching. How exciting, how exciting. Japan is absolutely amazing, guys. I have been here four and a half years. Uh, I was supposed to leave after one year. There was no way in the world your girl was leaving. Y'all gonna have to drag me out of this piece because I ain't going nowhere. I really don't know what the future holds. I really want to travel some more and live in some other places. But yeah, I've been here four and a half years and I love it. <coughs> so let's get into it, shall we? <coughs> My iPad about to die. Moving to Japan took less preparation than moving to Korea. I actually moved to Japan from Korea, so a lot of the paperwork was kind of done for me by the company. It was really easy to kind of just transfer all that stuff. But in the planning phase, you need to figure out where you want to go and what job you want to do. Once you figure out these two things, you can start getting a little bit more specific and realistic. I knew I did not want to live smack dab dead in Tokyo. I wanted to live closer to like Yokohama side. So I ended up finding an apartment right in the middle. It's absolutely amazing. I love this spot so much. But as for working, I knew I wanted to work in Tokyo. In university, I knew I wanted to move out to Japan. And actually, the first time I applied to work here, I got turned down because I didn't have enough work experience. So that's why I went to Korea first to gain one more year of work experience. While I was in university, I was also preparing. I was getting a year of experience. I was teaching. And obviously, I went to Korea and got a second year of experience. Other things you need to prepare is your resume, um, some kind of essay. And trust me, you're going to be using this a lot. Prepare an essay on like why you want to live here, talking about yourself, your experience, how you're going to use that in the job field. Like, oh my god, I used it so many times. I just kept piecing, taking pieces out, taking pieces out. You're going to need something similar in the form of a short summary for your resume and your applications. You also need to be gathering some references because trust me, you're going to need those references. Professional, Professional references. references? No, grandma doesn't count. He helps me with the laundry. I used my job and a couple of professors. Obviously, you want to be studying the language. It's going to help you out big time. Japanese is one of them really, really difficult languages. Like, oh my gosh, I tried. I didn't get nearly as far as I did with Korean because for the simple fact that Japanese has way too many characters and ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm not here to deter you, but oh God. So start, start now because oh the headache especially in japan i think it's important to try and learn some of the language because so many places do not speak english like the gas company and some banks and just things that you would think would speak english since they deal with like international people but not nah, they don't even speak not english and if you're going like out in the countryside oh man Goes without saying that you need a degree. My degree is in business management as well as politics. And it's kind of centered around the politics behind like school systems. So I'm interested in being a school director, like a principal, something like that. I tied in my business degree into that. And that's kind of how I was able to get the higher level job that I did get. In Korea, I was working as a director of the entire like language program as well as a model. Here, I have a higher position where I do a lot of managerial work, but I still came in as like a teacher. Like my visa is just a work visa. Documentation. Woo, that's a headache. I most mostly did a lot of the documentation for Korea. For Japan, I didn't have to do too much, but obviously you're gonna need your passport, you need a professional photo, you need your resume, you need that essay I was talking about, you're gonna need your application for whatever job that you're going to, you're gonna need your degree. You're gonna need an official copy of your degree, like it can't be like something that you just printed on the computer. All the documents that you are turning in, like the official documents, need to be notarized. I didn't even know what that was at the time. I was like, what do you mean I can't just print it out? So I had to go to like a notary department, I don't know, where they notarize each document, which basically just says like, hey, this is official. 
I don't know, but it, it took forever. Depends on the job, so definitely talk with them and figure out what documents you will need, but you wanna start like preparing these things in advance, especially your references. Like you're gonna need them references like ASAP. Another thing you need to be preparing obviously is money. Oh my gosh. Moving to Japan was very, very very expensive, expensive for, me. for me. You're gonna need your plane ticket. A lot of companies do not cover your plane ticket. Somewhere to stay while you're here, looking for an apartment if you don't already have one. You're gonna need all the money associated with getting an apartment. You're gonna need to be able to cover all of your expenses for an entire month because you're not getting paid that month, but you are working. <laughs> money for your transportation costs to get to and from work and anywhere else that you need to go. You're also gonna need to get a lot of stuff hooked up, like your phone. You need a phone ASAP, Japanese phone number, right away because you can't hook up so many things without a Japanese phone number. For example, your bank account, you need a Japanese phone number. You know, you're gonna wanna get internet, electricity, gas. It's a lot, it's a lot of money. Groceries, eating, clothes, shoes. I can't give you an estimate because it just depends on where you are moving to, but for me, I, I'm not, oh, I spent a good four or five thousand dollars moving here. Another thing you got to prepare is your onco or your stamp. I never got one of these, by the way, because I was just so fed up with everything that I already had to do to move here. I feel like that was like the last straw, and I still to this day don't have a stamp. Like, it acts as your signature, right? I'm just like, why do I need this? There's a pin. There's a pin. I'm not doing this. If you want one, it's really cool. If you got monies for that. Next, job hunting. Most stressful part for a lot of people. Um, I recommend Teachaway and Temple.org and just basic searches on Google, which is how I found my job. In Japan for teaching, you can go like the private route with a bunch of different companies, or you can teach at actual Japanese schools. I think they call this an ALT, if I'm not mistaken. There is this amazing program called the JET program. If I could have done that, I would have, but I couldn't. The application process is an entire year. That's how prepared you need to be. Basically gotta apply like a year in advance, and like the timing was just really bad for me, so I couldn't do that one, but that's a really good program if you're just trying to like, you know, come here for a little while, make a little bit of money, and just not be stressing so much. From what I've heard from other people and all my friends, ALTs really don't make that much money, although it's very, very fun. You're gonna have a lot more free time. Uh, if you like working with kids, that's great. I don't, I definitely wasn't really trying to teach like that, so I definitely went the corporate route. Also, there's no area of improvement. You can't move up in the ranks, which obviously I really needed. And also there's no opportunity to make overtime pay. So like your pay is your pay. Now the private route, there's a lot of different companies. ECC, Nova, Eon, there's a lot. But the thing is, you go be working like a like dog. A dog. <laughs> The work isn't hard, but the hours are very long. If you're trying to come here and you don't want to teach English, there are some other options, such as a student visa. I don't know much about this, but basically you just gotta have a lot of money. Um, You gotta get accepted into the university or wherever you're trying to go and you have to pay a lot. Also, on a student visa, you're not allowed to work. So you just, I don't know. I don't know. This ain't for the poor girls from the hood. Like, we ain't got this option. Um, I can't, <laughs> like, that's not even possible. And Japanese schools actually tend to be quite expensive. Other option is a working holiday visa. I so would have done this too, but this is not an option for Americans. So, everyone else, go have fun. Americans, why we can't, I, I believe you only get one year and you have an option to extend it another additional like six months. I really don't know. Check this out for yourself. That's just what I heard. It's a one-time thing. You can't renew it. You get to do it once. So yeah. If you're just trying to be here for a little while, I think that's a really cool opportunity. The other one is like an entertainment visa for like people like models and stuff. I definitely didn't want to do this one because it's way too short. I think you only get six months. You got to go through your agency. Your agency will sponsor your visa and they'll do all the paperwork, all that stuff for you. Another visa you can get it's just a tourist visa. I think this one is three months. It's renewable and you can just keep renewing it. But if I'm not mistaken, you can only be in the country for like six months at a time and then you have to leave for a specific period of time before you can come back. Don't quote me. I'm just giving y'all like, you know, ideas, okay? I don't really know all the facts. And then finally, the work visa, the one that I have. I have a special skills visa. Um, I have a five-year visa, not a one-year work visa. You get points based off of a lot of different things. Your degree, your experience, volunteer work. There are a lot of different things that go into getting this visa. So I ended up getting the full five years, which I'm very happy about. You definitely do need a degree. So obviously make sure that you're in your university. I don't really know how this works for other jobs like um, in engineering or, or chefs or all that other stuff. So you'd have to look into that. With the work visa, you 
obviously need a company to sponsor that visa. You can't just come here and work. That's not really how it works. So you need to find a place to work. They will sponsor your visa and they'll tell you kind of all the paperwork that you need. They'll turn in everything for you. You just have to send over whatever they ask for. Okay. okay. You prepare. You looked for your job. You got your job. You got all your paperwork in. It's time to go. Next, we're going to be talking about packing. The fun part. It was so exciting knowing that I was preparing to go live in another country, but let me help you out. Let me help you out. Doug's making so much noise. Things to bring to Japan. What is Doug doing? The number one thing that you need to pack is deodorant. Holy poop. Okay, that, you... <laughs> I don't understand how such a humid island doesn't have deodorant. In Japan, they have, I don't know what they want to call this thing that they think is deodorant, but it's not deodorant, I promise you, it's not. A lot of them don't even have like antiperspirants in them and you just gonna be sweating and it's not, no. Every time I go to America, the entire office begs me to bring them deodorant. This is the souvenir they ask for. If you are larger in any area, bring whatever you'll need for that area. If you got some big titties, you better bring some bras because they ain't got them here. If you have big feet, bring your own shoes. Obviously, Japan sells things meant for Japanese, Japanese people. people. So if you need anything that might be bigger than a Japanese person, bring that. Makeup, especially the brown girls, bring your own makeup. Oh my gosh. It's probably one of the biggest headaches to this day is just getting makeup. When I go home to America, I stock up. That's how I get all my makeup. There's a couple of things on Amazon, but it's just like you end up paying like four times the amount that what it really costs. Another thing that surprisingly you might need is sunscreen. The sunscreen here is tiny and it's really expensive. You will see people fully suited up in summer. I'm talking SWAT team covered head to toe in the heat. They got on a hat, an umbrella, just in case the hat wasn't enough. Long sleeve, turtleneck, all of that, just to stay out of the sun. It ain't never that serious, never. Unless you wanna do all of that, bring your own sunscreen. And a lot of the sunscreens have like skin bleaching products in there, so you really gotta be careful. Like, I cannot. I tried a face lotion and I started getting blotches on my skin and that was because there was some skin bleaching product in there, so you have to be really, really careful. Snacks, snacks, <laughs> the fun part, snack. Like I knew I was a snack, but now like I'm a snack. I'm asleep. Snack. There's a pickle. Snack. One thing I suggest you bring, which I think makes a great gift, like if you're just starting a new company and you want to, you know, get your boss and your new co-workers something, Pop-Tarts and Reese's. There are no Reese's here, so those are really rare, but a lot of people kind of know about Reese's, so when they see them, they're like, oh my god, you got Reese's? You got them Reese's? Girl, let me get one of them Reese's. Pop-Tarts are also a really cool thing to, like, bring them. It's so funny when they ask me, how do I eat this? That's a good question. Comment down below how you eat a Pop-Tart. In my opinion, there's only one way. You put it in the toaster, you make it warm, and you put butter on it. I saw someone open one out the pack and just put it in their mouth and I was like, you're not going to cook that? But yeah, any international snacks or goodies or food that you think you're going to need, definitely bring. They have some international stuff here, but it's really, really expensive. Two things I always ask for is ranch dressing and the little packets of sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's. When my family come, I'm like, can y'all please bring me those? And every time they try and bring me like the packets from McDonald's, they end up like leaking and breaking. So I only get like half of what they actually packed, but it's worth it. I still haven't been able to find ranch dressing over here. Another thing you might want to bring is a towel. This is just me personally in this area where I live. I have not been able to find any good towels. Every single time I go back home, I bring back like one or two towels because the towels here suck. Like, like drying yourself with tissues. The next one, very, very important, especially for someone like me. Electronics. electronics! The lies, the lies we've been told. People are like, oh my god, I live in Japan, the electronics must be so advanced and they must be so cheap, blah, blah, blah. Where? Electronics here are outrageously expensive. I'm talking like double the cost. Don't try and buy no laptop over here, no camera equipment, no lenses. What I do is I'll buy something on Amazon and pay for the shipping and it's still cheaper. Really think about the electronics that you want to bring. Also the plugs, plugs. Also in Japan, there's like these two prong plugs. That third prong, when it's like three, they don't have that in the outlets. So if you need some kind of like converter, or I don't know what to call them things. Them little, them little things that you plug in that make the outlet a different size. Stay in school. 
Another thing you need to bring is medication. Every over-the-counter medication over here, I promise you, is some Skittles. They be selling Skittles and they just put pain relief on there, but it's, it's not pain relief. It's just Skittles. Our basic stuff is better than some of the stuff that you'll even get at the doctor's office. It's wild. Everything is like mega watered down. That's not the right word. Nothing is strong whatsoever. Also, they don't have NyQuil or DayQuil or anything like that. That's a big one. Someone told me NyQuil was illegal here. Every time I have NyQuil in my bag and I fly here, my bag gets checked like by the customs people and they leave a note in, in my bag like we went through your stuff, we suspected something. But every time my NyQuil is still in there, I wrap it like crazy in a bunch of stuff. I don't know if it's illegal. I really, I don't know. Next, apartment hunting. Absolutely my number one favorite part of moving to Japan. I, I love apartment hunting. That's just like my thing. Websites that I used. I used these websites when I was apartment hunting. Awesome websites because they're in English. Everything's broken down for you. It's very, very easy to understand. I applied for my job. There's a cat out there. Oh, it's so cute. I applied for my job in Japan while I was living in Korea. I was supposed to move there right away, but I didn't find an apartment yet, so I asked for a little bit more time. After my contract was up in Korea, I went back home to America and I continued to search for an apartment and I still didn't find one. I had to tell my job like, yo, I'm not coming until I find the right place because that was just so, so important for me. So yeah, it took me a full like two or three months to find this apartment. If you're not picky, I think you'll be fine, but I'm very picky. Like I wanted two rooms, I wanted to tummy floor in one of the rooms I wanted the place to not be near anyone else I don't want to look out of my window and see so-and-so in his underwear and vice versa I needed to be surrounded by nature so I wanted somewhere that was like slightly in the countryside but still close to the city so I can go to work and lastly I wanted them dang Japanese sliding doors like how you gonna move to Japan and got me feeling like I'm in LA. No. no. And it all needed to be in my budget. So it took me a minute to find this place, but I found the perfect place. It can be very expensive or very inexpensive depending on like the realtor company that you go with. For example, you might have to pay first month's rent, a security deposit, key money. What the flip is this, right? What is this? This was such a shock, but I paid this in Korea, so I wasn't shocked when I came to Japan. Key money is like this gift money that you give to the landlord. It's high as heck. It's about the same cost, if not more, as your rent. And this is just a gift, like you don't get it back. In Korea, you get it back. Here, there are a lot of places that don't actually give this back. It's a straight gift. Like, oh my God, you know, six, seven hundred dollar gift. There also might be this thing called a lock changing fee. You might have to pay a fire insurance fee. And sometimes even like this cleaning fee, like this is your job, well, I gotta pay this. But those websites that I listed usually have like what fees you actually have to pay and don't have to pay. Also, probably gonna need a guarantor. What is a guarantor? Guarantor is like a cosigner basically, but these are companies that will help you and cosign on your behalf. You pay them up front and then you pay them annually and they act as your cosigner for whatever apartment that you want. Want to get there are a lot of places that don't accept foreigners um i'm not gonna get into all of that for me i had to pay first month's rent a security deposit key money some kind of fire insurance fee guarantor i had to pay them and also when i moved in here there was nothing in here when i say nothing i mean they didn't even have like light fixtures it's not like a light bulb these these fixtures are actually supposed to be there already and they're not and I had to get them like installed I also had to get internet installed I had to pay the internet company to like come set up like legit wiring and junk outside Just so I could get internet in here the router alone cost me a hundred dollars So I had to buy a washer a refrigerator all the furniture I'm talking bed table couch desk all the lighting stove. There's no stove top can't cook nothing The only thing that was here was the two AC units when searching for an apartment I recommend not getting a very old building because there's a lot of problems associated with those like mold dust mites and bugs like bugs are huge over here they got y'all saw that if you saw it in my last video they got they got human sized spiders like the size of your hand and they just get in i don't know how they get in but they get in also would not recommend living on the first floor again the bugs what the fuck kind of bug is that a oh, bitch eyelash bug them spiders y'all they just open the door when you on the first floor they open the door and the insulation is a nightmare i swear these old japanese homes are made out of paper and then i look and actually no they are a lot of them are made out of paper you turn the heater on and as soon as you turn it off instantly freezing same with the summer and you're just wasting money it's just blowing out the dough Blow, blowing out the walls what am i saying blowing out the walls so yeah try and find uh, a newer place if you can so yeah, it can get really expensive. Just make sure you prepare and you start saving early so that when you get here, you know you're good to go. Also, 
some questions that I've been getting. Um, the number one question is if I have any problems living here as an African American. The answer to that is absolutely not. I actually don't. This depends on the person. It depends on the area. That's why I always say go experience stuff for yourself because you never know. But no, I have not had any like racist problems here at all. The only thing I can say is that people are scared of you a little bit. You gotta be understanding about that. Like a lot of these people have never even seen a black person before in their life. I do get the whole occasional someone doesn't want to sit next to me on the train bus thing because it's more so they're afraid not because they hate me for the fact that I know I do this I, I just cannot get angry because when I go on a bus or a train or somewhere in a public place and I see empty seats I sit next to the person I feel the most safe and comfortable around so I'm not mad when somebody don't want to sit next to the first black person that they ever seen in their life now racism that's a whole nother story I had a lot of that in Korea I'm not getting into that I'll put the video somewhere but no I don't have any problems here in Japan for example, I was on my way to work and I noticed this gorgeous woman. She had some high heels on. She's walking across the crosswalk. She's on her phone and she had a whole roll of toilet paper stuck to her shoe. Nobody was going to tell her nothing. She was going to go all the way to work with that toilet paper. People be on the strongest level of minding your own business and staying in your own lane. But if like, come on now, help me out if I got toilet paper on my shoe. <laughs> I tried to hurry because I was kind of far away and I ran up behind her and I tapped her on her shoulder and she freaked out. She was like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm like, what? Oh, what? Really? Do I really look that frightening? At the most, I got a tan. So she was scared and then I quickly told her, you know, you got, you got toilet paper on her shoe. And then or like her whole everything changed. She was like, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, in, in Japanese. But yeah, you just, you got to show them that you're friendly. You're not something to be scared of, obviously. Black people are just very unfamiliar, you know? I think that's it. I'm so sure I probably left some junk out, but if you guys have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I'll try and get back to you. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck. It's so, so exciting if you are planning on moving here. As I said, I've been here four and a half years. Absolutely love it. I highly recommend. Like, it is so hard to leave Japan. It is so peaceful here. It's just a whole nother vibe over here. Everywhere you go is beautiful. It's always fun. Like, simple tasks like just going to the grocery store is exciting. Always something going on because, like, I feel like the society is very seasonal. There's just always something to do, eat, see, go. Oh, I love it. And with it being so peaceful and Japanese people being so polite and kind, I just like highly recommend it for foreigners to come here because like won't really have any issues. Like Japanese people, they are so friendly, so polite. I know y'all heard of Japanese hospitality. Like that junk is real. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I can make more videos. I'll appreciate it and yeah. I'll see you guys next time.